The Bible says, I have found David. But the anointing was not looking for David. There was a kind of person David needed to become for the anointing to find him. I have found David. But it is not David the anointing is looking for. The anointing is looking for my servant. I have found a man of God in your life. But it is not a man of God that I'm looking for. I have found John. I have found Joshua. I found him since 2001. But there is a kind of person the anointing and the mantle is looking for. He simply calls that person my servant. I have found that businessman. But it is not the businessman the anointing is looking for. It is looking for my servant. My servant is not a name. My servant is a journey that turns David to become a certain kind of vessel. Are we together now? There are many, many people who want the anointing, but they do not know that until you become his servant, until you become his servant, until you become his servant in business, his servant in ministry, his servant on the crusade ground, for as long as you are still David, David has his own ambition. David has his own destiny. David has his own dreams. You don't use the anointing to do your own thing. You must become my servant. Do you know the journey that translates David to his servant? The name given to that journey is death. Death to everything. I have found David. It was easy finding David. But I'm still finding my servant. I have found a woman. But I'm still looking for my servant to turn her into a prophetess. Hmm. I have found Yola, great preachers, Kaliga Barakos Yata. But I'm still looking for my servant. I'm showing you what has separated many people into spiritual cadres. There are some who are still David, wanting the anointing, but others have become his servants. Get this revelation and it will change your life forever. I have found a nice gentleman who has a beautiful musical voice. But I'm still looking for my servant. I have found someone who opened a pharmacy. But I'm still looking for my servant. The anointing does not come upon men. The anointing comes upon his servant. Let's go back to that scripture. Please help four people. They will start running now by the anointing. I just saw the spirit of grace like a dove just came upon four people. And it's an empowerment by the spirit. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. But they are going to start running right now by the spirit. Krage keban tash kaliga bra. Please help them. Ente kri haskade la to shavra hasia. Kre kaduja brandi gebele kusiata. Kraga bede gede bele keto shavra skade bele tasia. Now listen. I want you to pay attention. Your life is about to change. There is a dimension of glory you are being immersed into. Your ministry and your life will never be the same. The old you is about to give way to a new you that is carrying potent, genuine spiritual power. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. Hear me for as long. As self and flesh 
is still there. It is not the anointing of the spirit that will rest upon you. Maybe something else can come upon you. I have found, give us that scripture, David. But I'm looking for my servant. So for 20 years in ministry, you have been David. That is the reason why the anointing, the mantle of your destiny, the, the mantle has hovered around your church. It has hovered around Yola. It has hovered around homes, searching for servants. Listen to me. Let's finish that scripture. Finally, David becomes his servant. And the Bible says, with my holy oil, I have anointed that servant. Next verse, reading to 24. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall also strengthen him. By reason of the anointing, the enemy shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him. 23. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. It says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his authority be exalted. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know why Jesus was not anointed from birth? Do you know why Jesus was not anointed from age 12? Because the Bible says he had to learn obedience by the things he suffered. Even your Jesus did not get anointed just because he was the son of God. He had to go through the pathway. I have found Jesus, but I'm looking for the one who is prepared to serve the will of the father. And until age 30, before that anointing came, let me tell you this. There is no limit to what God can do in your life. There is no limit to the, um, the degree of unction and grace that can come upon you. The key is death that turns ordinary men to become servants. You know what it means to be a servant? The hallmark of servanthood is that you lose the ability to tell God no. Everything that comes from him is yes. For as long as you still have your agenda, for as long as you still have your pride, for as long as you still have your ministry, it is not the anointing from heaven that comes upon you. Tonight, God sent me here to tell someone, he has found you, but he's looking for his servant. He's looking for his servant. Oh, he's looking for his servant to turn you into a genuine apostle, a genuine prophet, a genuine businessman. So in this miracle and impartation service, listen carefully. It is not just about shouting amen. Something must die in your heart. It says in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Something has to die for you to see. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that flesh died, I saw the Lord. You cannot see him when there are two kings. One king must die. Uzziah had to die to see the other king. There cannot be two thrones in your heart. No. Listen carefully. I wish I had the time to begin to tell you my journey in the spirit and my journey with God. <sighs> but this anointing that we have downplayed, that we have limited to just falling down and standing up, or limited to just calling names and prophesying, as wonderful as that is, let me tell you there are layers and there are dimensions and there are levels of the anointing. There are virgin dimensions that God wants to. I hope you know that the prophecy upon the church age is that the former and the latter reign. Do you know what that means? There are mantles. This, I hope you know mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. No, no. Every mantle you read in the Bible is still on earth. But there is a kind of believer that must carry it. And it's not by claiming. It's by the sacrifice of death. Help those under the anointing. Spirit of God, 
is pruning and circumcising men. I believe that is Yola is stepping into a prophetic, a very prophetic season. I truly believe that. That there are men and women who are rising by the Spirit. Men and women who are dead enough to carry these end time mantles. It will take being more than a preacher. It will take being more than a man of God. It will take being more than a businessman. It is for those who have vowed to serve the purposes of the king in life and in death. Hallelujah. Sit down for five minutes, please. Let me establish two more things about the anointing and then we'll pray. Be sensitive. Something is happening here. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear you. I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain. Open us love gates, no shade ke pras kam prakata bakato shekete fregede meleketa. of heaven Kenta shamaska vasa brakete baleko siata Open the floodgates I raised that song because I saw a vision I just saw a vision of rain coming and the scripture that came to me is until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest we see the rain see the rain your ministry is about to receive that dew of Hammon afresh again Now, please sit down. Fire is burning in this place. I need to show you two things before we begin to pray. Fire is burning in this place. Finally, His Majesty is finding His servant. Where are all those young men in your prayer groups? God has brought you here. It's time to be ignited by fire, by the Spirit of the living God. It's been a season of training with the spirit now it's time for your eyes to see to see afresh to see afresh gates of heaven in a masena banana shalala la la shena bara sada balada balada balaku diada in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Listen, many of you, let me explain something to you. Don't think that you are, I'm wasting your time. What is happening to you <laughs> is that you are being immersed. There is a kind of glory. You know how you marinate something because you want to fry it or you want to cook it. This is what is happening to you. These songs are not just special numbers. I'm not a musician. They are ladders in the spirit. There is an ascendance that is happening to your spirit man. 
as you are under this influence, he said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Yola has come to you, he's Israel. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the risen Lord. Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of there are five people God is showing me. Five people, you are all ladies. I'm seeing a very strong mantle, prophetic psalmistry. This is what is coming upon you. Kabira Aliakata. I call deep to be unlocked within your spirit, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. And out of your belly shall flow. show you two keys for receiving the anointing and then we'll begin to pray my God please sit down if you can ladies and gentlemen what you are experiencing tonight is the ministry of the paraclet, the spirit of the living God. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, there are many of you, your ministries will carry these mantles. You will go back and the power of God will sweep across this city in ways that you cannot imagine. Let me show you two keys. Please be seated if you can. 
There are two there are two biblical keys. I know that the waters has been stirred. <laughs> there are two keys to receiving anointings, mantles, and graces. And I want to show you the keys now, and then we'll pray. Please don't be distracted. If this is all we do tonight, many of you will not forget this day for a very long time. For how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly like the eagles when you don't know the way? His power at work in you, changing everything. Be no and surprise. That's what God is doing. He's changing everything. For someone here, swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. The first key that controls the reception of strange graces and mantles, please write it is an encounter with God himself. When you have an encounter with the God of the Bible, you can receive as a reward for encountering God directly from God. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus. Jesus. How God anointed Jesus. God can anoint men. How God anointed Jesus. Direct encounters with God. Solomon slept and had a dream and received an impartation of an understanding heart and the spirit of wisdom directly from God. But number two, which is the more common pattern we see in scripture, is through the mystery called impartation. Write it down, please. Impartation. Impartation. Kalika praske venika pariyata kosa fraskedash. Romans 1.11, Paul was speaking to the church in Rome. He said, for I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. I think it was in Philippians 1 verse 7 or so. He said, ye all are partakers of my grace. When God grants a man access to an anointing, you see, the anointing and the graces of God are responsible for the dimensions of spiritual possibilities that we experience in this kingdom. So, the grace for favor will not produce healing. No, it will produce favor. These graces have jurisdiction of operation. So, don't just say, I am anointed. No. The anointing and the distribution of graces, they are jurisdictional in operation. The anointing for prosperity will not raise the dead. It has its jurisdiction. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, it says, and God is able to make all grace, say all grace, not some grace, all grace, all the dimensions of grace are bound towards you so that ye, on account of those graces, having sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. 
God is able to make all grace. Please take it higher for me. Are we together now? All grace. Don't say, Apostle, I have the prophetic. That's not the only thing needed for your destiny. Your heart must be open to receive all grace. The Bible says, speaking to Moses, it says, and thou shalt take Joshua, in whom is the Spirit already, and thou shalt lay your hands upon him, and anoint him, he says, and then thou shalt take some of your honor, and you will give to him. To a man who is already anointed. Listen to me. Co-laborers in the gospel, by the privilege of God's grace, I can tell you, there is much more we can do for the kingdom. But our possibilities are limited by the extent of grace and the dimensions of grace that are at work in us. You see, the apostolic and the uh, prophetic anointing works like this. When you come into a region, because of how God has built you by the election of grace and the sacrifice of alignment, you are able to assume whatever mold God wants to release and distribute the graces that are deficient within a territory. Are we together now? You can know the graces that are deficient within the territory by the absence of certain testimonies. All you need to do is to take an honest appraisal of your life and an honest appraisal of your ministry and an honest appraisal of your test or your, of your territory you can tell the graces that are there and the graces that are not there and you can tell the degree of what grace is there because grace and peace can be multiplied by the time the sick still remain sick there is a grace that has not yet come upon your territory by the time lives and destinies are still confused that means there is a level of the accurate manifestation of the character of the prophetic to bring direction that is missing. By the time the average believer in Adamawa and Yola is bankrupt of stature, it means there is a dimension of the prophetic revelatory dimension of teaching that is not there. Because there is a grace that was upon Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible says when that grace comes upon a man, you can make all men see. All men can see. Regardless their educational background, regardless their pedigree, once that grace is upon you, it can make all men see. When there's widespread poverty across the territory, there is what the Bible calls the power to get wealth. It means that engracing is not yet there. My assignment tonight haven't endured in the course of this conference is that among the many things God is going to be doing is he's going to be distributing spiritual possibilities in addition to that which you have received that there can be higher measures of the same grace and then virgin dimensions of grace that your hands and your destiny and your ministry has not yet captured but Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with exploring the deep things in God, there are no generals there. We, the best of us still remains a toddler compared to the vast riches of what is available to the saints. So Paul prayed this way. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that true? That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know. He was praying over the church in Ephesus. To comprehend the kind of power that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead. And exalted to be far above every throne, dominion, principalities, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but even in the world to come. I cry every time. And I tell God I'm available. More love. More power, more of you in my life. When I go to him, I don't go as a man of God. More love. There are still greater assignments 
more power, more of you in my life. You see, there are many of us who have not been able to step into the deeper levels of the spirit because of pride, overconfidence, carelessness, and ar an arrival mentality. I prophesied to someone and the person had a child. Thank God for it, but is that all? I shared a revelation and that revelation <laughs> ah, there are parts in the spirit tonight your heart must be open that a thousand cubits will be measured for you again that regardless what we have seen I submit to you by the authority of scripture there are many many dimensions we have not seen every time I read the Bible sometimes tears begin to come out of my eyes and my Christ, Lord, where did we miss it? You read about these men and women who the Bible talks about in Hebrews 11. It says that they obtained a good report. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, tore the mouth of lions. Women who received their dead back to life. Yola, hear me. It is not because Satan is so powerful. It's because men of fire have not truly risen. And I'm not saying this to downplay and demean what you're already doing for God. I know that many of us in various ways are doing our best. But the Lord has commanded this apostolic and prophetic convergence because there is need for more. Yesterday's oil cannot solve today's problem. <clears throat> the woman had oil, but it was too small to help her. Her issue was not the absence of oil. It was that the oil was not enough to take her out of debt. And the prophet said, the problem is not the oil. The problem is the vessel. Go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. And once they were vessels, he said, lock the door. Because there are things God will not do with you in public. Lock the door and let multiplication start happening. And the Bible says, as she locked the door, multiplication of oil and grace started. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Hear me. I know that your city is a prosperous city, but my question is how many kingdom people have commanded the wealth of the kingdom? We keep jumping and shouting the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, yet our children are becoming prostitutes, our young men are becoming armed robbers because of poverty. Can I tell you, do not say it does not matter. Every time Satan wants to destroy a people, he uses hunger. Hunger always sends Israel to Egypt. Hunger always sends Israel to Egypt. There is only one reason Israel goes to Egypt. Hunger. That means there are financial apostles that must rise from this meeting. You have seen it in your dreams. Men and women who will build institutions. Men and women who will say, under my watch, no pastor will compromise because of money again. I will stand as a financial pillar, holding the hands of Moses. There are many men of God who started well, but because of this spirit of poverty, are now roaming around the corridors of compromise. I can tell you there are men and women here, the mantle that is about to come upon you tonight, in a strange way you will command the wealth of the kingdom, but it will be without pride because you know the assignment and the purpose of wealth. How about the healing anointing? Listen to me. When you study the materials and the writings of men like Smith Wigglesworth, before they died, they left a prophecy. And fathers of faith in this nation Men like Benson, Archbishop Benson, Idahosa, Apostle Babalola, they left a prophecy that there is coming a generation greater than them. They said it. They said as great as it is, there is a generation coming that will be accumulation of the former and the latter reign. Did the Bible not say this is the generation of them that seek thy face, O Jacob? Can I tell you, one of the graces that must be restored to the body as we prepare to receive Jesus Christ is the restoration of genuine healing mantles. Most young people have not truly seen what a healing ministry looks like. 
just um, thank God for the headaches, one wheelchair here, but most people, it will take people who are at least maybe 50 years and above, they will tell you that they saw the healing ministry. Men and women that carried power, you would bring crutches out like you are carrying building materials. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. The day the dead begins to rise in Yola, the day a popular madman that everybody knows on the street comes under the influence of this former and latter reign, and that madness leaves. Let me tell you, every church will be filled. It's not because there are no members. It's because they are tired of a powerless manifestation or a powerless proposals. God can do this. God can heal. God can change your story. They shout amen and yet nothing happens. John 4, 48 says, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. This is a generation that wants proof. If you say God heals, prove it. If you say God restores, prove it. Mm. Elisha said, let the king come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. There will also be an, a restoration of men and women who carry the, the mantle that was upon Joseph and Daniel and will be represented in government. If there's anyone here in government, please listen to me very carefully. God is counting on the church. And let's not bring this age-long ignorance that has punished us and kept us down for many years that it does not matter. One policy in the parliament can punish Daniel regardless his prayer life. There needs to be men and women who have a covenant of no compromise that they will not defile themselves with the king's meat, that God can trust to be in strategic positions of power. How about lecturers? The campus today has become a place of revival, but it's also the place where Satan recruits people. There are people who go to the campus as nice ladies, nice gentlemen, and almost come out as devils. They hold a certificate plus demons. Because that four, five, six years has turned them from saints to something else. There needs to be lecturers who are full of the Holy Ghost. That one student can come into your office saying, sir, I don't know why I don't understand. I'm the only person, the only child of my, my widowed mom. And you will shift that, lect that lecturing manual one side and say, listen, I'm not only a lecturer. I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, that demon, that devil out of this student. And the student returns after five years to say, sir, do you remember me? Territorial impact is not just a doctrine. It's not just a discussion. It's something that should happen within our territories. That a day will come every Sunday, the roads will be empty because everybody has gone to the house of God. Is you know what the Bible says? That they will say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. They have learned that God is in the midst of his people. All of these people that are here inside and outside, can I tell you? John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. These things are not cliches. Let's stop giving excuses and say people don't like church. It's a lie. They have not seen the kind of results that draw them. They will come and they will stay and they will pray. They will endure rain. They will endure sunshine. If they have a guarantee, they will encounter the God of the Bible. The days of Catherine Kuhlman and these, these great generals, people will line up for hours patiently waiting because they knew that these people, they came with glory, not just stories. Businessmen, have you conquered the spirits that sit upon businesses and make sure that family keeps, families keep perpetuating poverty and lack? So that you do not think the anointing is just for healing the sick 
and just for the supernatural and then alienate yourself and say no i'm just a businessman i'm just a mother mary was anointed to give birth to jesus and take care of him without the anointing you think mary would have been able to do her work it took the anointing to raise one child now you have eight you need more anointing than the preacher because every arm robber came from a home and every preacher comes from a home every national problem was a regional problem that was not solved every regional problem was a family problem that could not be solved is that true all the people disturbing territory whether terrorists whether stubborn people who are causing mayhem all of them come from homes it was because there was no anointing to manage and contain their issues that is spilled over to society and today is destroying society so that means there are parents and family men that must receive anointings and mantles mantles that will keep your children obedient to the faith he said as for me and my house not me alone not me and my wife as for me and my house we will serve the lord there is a grace responsible for that outcome pastors we comforted ourselves in the morning because there are many of us who are already discouraged now do you know that after covid there are many pastors that plunge to depression because of death they plunge to all it looked like their labor of many years and decades just vanished there are many of you even in business now you have not recovered because what happened from COVID brought you from grace to grass. I have good news for you. The axe head can float back again. An encounter with God and a genuine impartation. A genuine impartation. And listen, the law of impartation is such that you must discern God in the vessel you want to receive from. You're not going to receive from a vessel by casually saying, well, I think that this person is anointed. No. The Bible says, he that receives a prophet, listen carefully, in the name of a prophet. That means there are other names by which you can receive the prophet. You can receive the prophet in the name of your tribesman. You can receive the prophet in the name of your husband. You can receive the prophet in the name of your wife. You can receive the prophet in the name of a colleague in ministry. But he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. God sent me here by the grace of God, by the privilege of God's grace. To not only come and teach and show you a pathway. To not only come and pray for the sick and declare breakthroughs. But that certain mantles and certain graces. I have come as a prophetic midwife by the spirit of God tonight that there are certain things for some of you your hand is almost there reaching to that which is prophetic i have come as a midwife to help you because you see midwives can be dangerous if a midwife is careless she can make a great destiny to become like that of mephibosheth mephibosheth's issue was not that he did anything wrong it was simply the carelessness of a midwife a midwife did not bring him out properly and for the rest of his life, he remained crippled. It matters who helps you to touch these new dimensions of God. Midwives can accelerate your access. Like the one who took Samson and trained Samson and Moses. Or midwives can be careless like the one who handled Mephibosheth. And cripple your capacity to make advancement. Are you ready to pray now? There are four things we are going to do and I want you to please listen. We are stepping into a very prophetic phase of this meeting now. Number one, I'm going to be praying for everybody's prayer request. So if you are here and you've not written your prayer request, whether you are outside, please allow those outside. Make sure everybody outside has access to write if you can have a prayer request. If you need to lend someone a piece of paper, everything that has mocked God in your life please I want you to write it bring it to the altar and let the God that answers by fire tonight let him be God there are certain things you are going to wave goodbye and believe me you will wave it forever so I'm going to give us five minutes whether you are outside whether you are inside those online 
I'm sure that a few people did not come with something to write. Please be your brother's keeper. Help someone with a piece of paper. Write. Barrenness. Write it down. Limitation in family. Write it down. Demonic oppression. Write it down. Everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Write it down. Because in the name of Jesus, it must come under the obedience of the Christ tonight. Number two. I'm going to have the opportunity to pray for the sick and to minister deliverance to the captives. Why is that so? Because the Bible declares, just help those under the anointing. The Bible says, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and then holiness. And then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. The gospel is not fully preached until it is backed up with signs and wonders. Let me show you a scripture that you should never forget. Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. Please give it to us and then we'll read. Preachers, this is particularly a word for you. That regardless what you do, the gospel cannot be complete. Except it is backed up by genuine signs and wonders. Romans 15, 19. Please give it to us. I'll have an opportunity to pray for the sick. If we have the time, we'll take a few testimonies. If there's no time, no problem. Let's read together. How many of you can see it projected? Just suspend your writing for one minute and let's read together. Ready? One to read. Through mighty signs and wonders, the Bible says, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means the gospel is not fully preached until signs and wonders accompany the message. Hallelujah. And then number three, we are going to pray that there will be a release and an activation of graces and mantles. Please, I'd, I'd like you to know that impartation is not just about falling down and shouting. These are just charismatic things that happen because of what the Holy Ghost is doing in men. The most important thing is the genuineness of, of your heart to be open and to receive. Because tonight, Saul will become Paul. Hmm. Tonight, Cephas will become Peter. Tonight, Sarai will become Sarah. Abraham will become Abraham. He says, and I will give you a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall call. Then finally, I will stand in faith with all the graces that are here represented. To speak over the territory of Adamawa. Every apostolic grace is territorial. You don't just speak to men. You speak to gates. And you speak to spirits. There are gates in every territory. They are not open just by desire. Mm -mm. There is a covenant that swings gates. Open tether and heather. Just suspend the collection first. Let me just know. If you are done writing... Just wave your prayer request where you are and ushers will come and pick them. So whether you are an usher, if there's no usher, someone stand up in that row and help collect and just pass it to them. Anybody can volunteer to just stand up and pick it so that we make it very fast. Majesty Majesty, your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hands. Sing, Majesty, sing, Majesty. Majesty, forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty, sing majesty. Grace 
has found me just as I am. Sing majesty. Wherever you are in the next one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands and begin to pray over your destiny and pray over your ministry and all that concerns you. This is a moment of prophecy. Go ahead and begin to pray everywhere, inside, outside. Make sure you pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Father, let this fire come upon my destiny. Let this fire come upon my life. Let me become a new man in the spirit. a shield for me you are my glory you are my glory you are my glory the lifter up of my head someone pray your ministry is about to shift your life is about to shift Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Do you know why I minister deliverance to the people of God? The reason is because behind many of the situations, listen carefully, behind many of the situations that plague God's people, in spite of the fact that the Bible declares that we have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation, you need to understand that the prophetic speakings of God does not automatically translate to their experiential manifestation. It takes faith and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom to make that which is finished to become manifest. Are we together now? So, when I minister to God's people, it is because the Bible declares that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic is to take that which is finished in Christ and stamp it to become an experiential reality in the life of the believer. Hallelujah. You will be surprised how many sincere people are here who are under all kinds of yokes, all kinds of diabolic things, satanic patterns that have men and women my Bible says listen carefully it says it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder is that true and the yoke from off your neck and it says the burden shall the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing families that have been tied down everybody went to school yet nobody's walking nobody rises no it's an anomaly, it should not be. The assignment of the power of God is to bring people and things and circumstances in alignment to the will of God. That means the anointing has no ministry if everything is in the will of God. But the moment a thing goes outside of the will of God, the anointing has an assignment to bring everything that is outside of the will of God to come back to the will of God. No wonder the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father it will be uprooted. I want to pray for someone. There is a holy anger in my spirit because I'm, I'm sensing the burden of families. The burden of people who are saying, Lord, there has to be a way out. 
Ah, that spirit will leave. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please hear me. The ushers are limited. And when I do instruct that you bring those under the anointing to the front, there is a reason why I ask them to come. Two things. Please be your brother's keeper. Whether or not you are an usher, once someone is under the anointing, please help them so they don't injure themselves. Number two, if I ask that you bring them out, you don't have to wait for the ushers. You can help to bring them out. And then please, um, let's be sure that those who might not be as decently dressed, maybe are covered so that um, the devil does not take advantage of what we're doing. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. At the count of three, you're going to shout the name Jesus, my God. I'm just seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing in this place. Fire. Fire. And once we count Jesus, all those under the anointing, as I begin to rebuke those spirits, please bring them out here. Father, you have anointed me, Paliker Solesebeta, with the anointing to break every chain and every yoke. I stand by the mystery of the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare over your people that every spirit that has bound God's people at the shout of the name of Jesus, let there be liberty now. Are you ready? At the count of three, you shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I curse every spirit. Go now, now. Please bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every devil of ancestry, every yoke of darkness, give way now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Bring them out. Outside, the power of God is coming on people. You're going to shout that name one more time. At the count of three, every spirit of ancestry, divination give way right now at the count of three one two three shout jesus gates be open yokes give way release god's people I command a release. I declare a jubilee. A jubilee. A jubilee. Let there be a release from every walk of darkness. Release their families. Release their destinies. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I'm still praying. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the hands of people held with chains. Your hand is a sign of your productivity. I don't know who has been under that bondage, but fire is coming now. At the count of three, I release those hands. One, two, three, be released now. 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 Be Satan, let God's people go. Satan, let God's people go. Witchcraft, let God's people go by the power of the Holy Ghost. There are destinies that when you rise, there is, there is an invisible force that will hold you down and pull you down. Even if it's after 30 years, you will see men rise in ministry, in destiny. I'm about to pray for you now. Every power that brings people down in your life and your family, 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be released now. 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 Altars and yokes fighting your prayer life, fighting your word study life, responsible for addictions, all kinds of satanic addictions. In the name of Jesus, be released now. Be released now. Hear me. The Bible says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. I want to declare liberty to all those who are in front here. In the name of Jesus, as the church in Yola, we speak over everyone in front here. Satan, your time is up. Take your hands from their lives and release them. Go now. Go, 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 go. Every strange spirit out of their destinies, out of their lives, forever, never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Said is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes. Hello, him, Madonai. Hello, him, Madonai. Hello, him, Madonai. Hello, him, Madonai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Who is Godia? I'm hearing the name Godia. Who is that person? Godia, the Lord wants to change your story. Where is that person? Come. A new day has come for you. Hallelujah. Who is Ephraim? Ephraim. I'm hearing the name Ephraim. 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 Your family is about to experience the mighty hand of Jehovah. of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. All of you are coming out. Okay, hold on. Guess what will happen? Once those in front, once you, you are back to yourself and you're fine, you can go back to your seat rejoicing. 
all those under the anointing so that I just quickly speak to one or two people as much as possible. Those who can stand, don't force any one of them, but those who are fine and can stand, let them just get up gently. Hallelujah. Who is Ephraim? Who is from Michika? Michika. That's where you are from. I want to pray for you. What do you do? What do you do? Huh? Okay, that's all right. I want... Heavens. You are from Michika. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Because God is going to open a door that will surprise you. I receive. You I believe receive. that? I receive. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon you and I shift you to a new dimension. Everything that has impeded your progress, I declare that it gives way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus. There's one of you standing here. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming on you now. One of the ladies. I just saw fire just come on you. And the Lord is saying that it's a new season. He's opening a door. Not just for you, but he's opening a door for your family members. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God. Let it be the beginning of new experiences for you, even by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ephraim, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, everything that represents witchcraft in your family, as God has located you, I decree and declare, it comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. Madam, when are you due? When are you due? Huh? Sir, By July. July. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, but lay your hands there so that they will not tell you you have a complication because I'm seeing something that is calling for an emergency because suddenly you start bleeding. And this is a demonic thing. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare you will give birth like the Hebrew women. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will give birth like the Hebrew women by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me a woman. Please don't come out carelessly. Seven years you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Seven years. I'm not just saying you are trusting God. Seven years you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Is there such a person? Let me pray for you very quickly. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare for all of you who have come out. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you return back rejoicing. Please, when you find that person, let me know. I want to pray for you. Seven years. Make sure you are married. Hallelujah. Are we together? Seven years. Do you believe the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes, sir. Place your hand on your stomach. Seven years too. I believe in miracles. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Madam, look at me. This woman. Look at me. Something, I'm seeing something leaving your stomach. This is what I want to rebuke. Let her go now. I curse that demonic spirit. Release her now. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, out of her, in the name of Jesus, never to return to you again. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. 
Hallelujah. Who works in UBA? UBA, the bank. I just saw UBA. Is there someone who works in UBA? I want to pray for you. I just saw this in my vision. UBA. Please make sure you don't tell lies. We are not playing games here. UBA. You work in UBA. Both of you, look at me. Madam. No, no, you don't have to kneel. Stand. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb too. Yes, you sir. too. Lay your hands there. Let me pray. Don't worry. I'm going to do a general prayer. I just gave a word for those who are trusting for seven years. In the name of Jesus. Who had miscarriage this year? Miscarriage. When? In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Lord is saying, behold, I do a new thing. In the name of Jesus, madam, look at me. I'm seeing a spirit. Let her go. Now. Out of her. Now. The name of Jesus Christ. Release her now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare that you return with a strange miracle. Out of her now. Release her destiny. For the Bible says... The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous man runneth to it and they are saved. Let this oppression come to an end now. The lady from UBA, please stand up. I want to pray for you. Both of you are in UBA. Are you sure? I want to pray for you because my dear, I hope you believe what I'm telling you. I'm not seeing you stay there for very long again. I'm seeing God shift you even out of this city. There is somewhere he's taking you. This has been your prayer. I want to pray for you. You are not going to stay long. Good news is coming for you. And God is wiping your tears. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus, let the grace that brings a confirmation to this prophetic word. May that grace be released upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look at all these things. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Let a pastor just help, just pray with them. This is what happens when you are ministering to people. Hallelujah. Now hear me please, for sake of time. If you are trusting God for healing, lay your hands now. I want to pray for you. Lay your hands in any part of your body please believe believe lay your hands there if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest go ahead jesus something special supernatural about your name Jesus something happens when I mention your name in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare, please keep your hands there. Every foul spirit that is responsible for the sicknesses and infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ, I command let God's people go free now. Shout a believing amen. Now I decree and declare from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Blood diseases. Be healed now. Migraines. Be healed now. HIV. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. Answer at whatever stage be healed now God is healing someone of breast lump 
in the name of Jesus be healed right now the left side of your breast having lumps I command those demonic lumps to live now there's someone who has a problem with your vision you're not completely blind but you don't see very well and you have severe pains especially around your right eye the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is showing me someone your wrist just your wrist like I'm, I'm demonstrating you are feeling severe pain it comes and it goes in the name of Jesus that pain lives now ulcer the Lord is healing someone of peptic ulcer be healed now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing fire around someone's chest be healed from ulcer now there is a condition called gastritis the Lord is healing someone of that condition right now in the name of Jesus Christ now the Lord is showing you someone you have a problem with your right limbs and you feel an unusual cold sensation very very cold and sometimes it looks like your leg is frozen and you cannot even you have to stay for a while it looks like muscle pull but it's not muscle pull in the name of Jesus I don't know who has that case but that demonic case leaves you now in the name of Jesus Christ someone you have I don't know if it's that something pierced you but you stop smelling that means you cannot smell things in the name of Jesus Christ your sense of smell is restored now some someone hit you in a dream you slept and you had a dream and someone hit you from the time you woke up in that dream there is no month you don't fall sick it looks like malaria typhoid malaria typhoid repeated like that regardless how you treat it it does not go in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I bring you life and healing right now the power of God is going to come on someone now the person is going to shout loud to the hearing of everybody the Lord is saying he's taking away the spirit of death from that family. No, 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 no. It's an exact person. One person. Help them. Help them. Loud shout. I curse that spirit of death. Over in the name of Jesus. That the sound of death that you will say, how can I lie, Sharia? And people keep dying. Any family here that has been mourning people anyhow, I stand by this mantle tonight and I declare in the name of Jesus, the spirit of untimely death leaves your family now. Leaves your family now. Whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus Christ, for you and for those you are standing for, I declare healing for you now. I declare healing for you now. I declare healing for you now. We change genotypes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands to this prayer request, everyone. Is there anyone who is yet to drop his or her request? Just wave yours so that the ushers can see. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Please let me have your attention, everybody. This is a very prophetic atmosphere. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, in everything by prayer... And supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto God don't assume that he knows let your request be made known unto God look at me 
if we prophesy, we prophesy in part. If we teach, we only teach according to the measure of revelation. But this that is written here is the most accurate representation of your desires. And the Bible says in Mark 11 and verse 24, it says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, it says, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. Do you believe that? Stretch your hands in one minute and begin to make declarations that these Egyptians I see today, I see them no more forever. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. This shame and reproach. I'm waiting for one person whose prayer needs to come here. Very quickly, protocol, you can bring it. Any one of you. Any one of you, you can bring it, please. You will marvel and wonder at the testimonies that will arise from here. Some of you are praying for your ministries. Some of you are praying for your businesses. It's a new season by the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to bow my knees. You don't have to kneel. I will do the kneeling. And I'm going to lay my hands on this request for the next two minutes. While I'm doing that, yours is to agree with me in prayer and to declare that in the name of Jesus, everything you have written here, you will only receive the answers. Are you ready to pray? Open your mouth and begin to pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want you as I pray to agree with me. Shouting a very loud amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. That every request here written is hereby turned into a testimony hereby turned into a testimony hereby turned into a testimony hear me any human agent who must partner with the holy spirit to make for the answers of these prayers we release their ministry right now And any human entity in partnership with the devil to allow the pain written here continue we declare that their function discontinue over your life yeah. prophetically 
I stand upon this prayer request in the name of Jesus that everything that has stood above you and has mocked you as I stand on this request I bring it down to the feet of Jesus I bring it down to the feet of Jesus I bring it down to the feet of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now listen please listen before I make the altar call I want to do the final impartation now you don't have to bring people out but please just help them this one now is for everybody whether you are inside or outside an impartation is a transference of grace a transference of spiritual possibilities there is nothing a man has that was not given of God and the purpose of the anointing is not just to use to serve the purposes of God but to make it available to people and regions that so desire for the ultimate purpose of the revelation of Jesus Christ and the advancement of his kingdom there are many of you who have come here thirsty. Some of you are in ministry. You have come here genuinely hungry. Some of you have cried. You have prayed. You have fasted for these dimensions of grace to come. This is your moment now. I want you to be sensitive as I release that grace. There are many graces that are going to fall upon you right now. And I want you to, don't just fall and stand up and roll around. But I want you to know and discern. That for every prophetic decree, whatever comes upon your life is for the revelation of Jesus Christ through you. Can I begin to release the graces now? Grace number one that God is releasing here is the grace for speed. I want to pray that grace now. Many of you have no idea what speed does to men. It's a prophetic system of time redemption. I stretch my hands for everyone who has suffered delay, for everyone who has been in a point of retrogression. May that grace for speech, Shalika Parukasia, let that grace come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. May God take 10 years and put it in one year for you. Number two, there is the grace for encounters. Mm. This is the grace that drives men to the secret place. This is the grace that opens men up to deep dimensions of intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Especially for those of you who are called into the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. I stretch my hands. Paraka sheleke paruziata. May that grace rest upon you now. May that apareketes get better. Let that grace rest upon you now. Don't be tired of receiving. The Lord is asking me to impart the spirit of wisdom. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, do you know what the Bible says about wisdom? It says, get wisdom, get understanding. About wisdom, it says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Let me pray for someone. A dimension of wisdom that you have not experienced, may it land upon your destiny now. Now I decree and declare, and for this I'm seeing the number 22, 2-2, two, two. there is the healing anointing, genuine grace for healing and for signs and wonders. I'm seeing 22 people, wherever they are, I stretch my hands, may that grace fall upon you now, fall upon you now, upon your ministry, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I release the grace for prayer and supplication? The grace to hold on to the four horns of the altar until you contact power. I don't know whose prayer life has gone down. Help that man. I don't know whose prayer life has gone down. But I stand by the God of Jeshurun. The one who rides upon the wings of the wind. For someone here, let there be an impartation of the grace for prayer. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. There are two graces I want to release else. And I want you to receive them. Please listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I want to release upon you the grace for influence and visibility. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. It says, but they put it on a lamp stand and it gives light to everyone who is there. Hear me. When the grace for influence and visibility is upon you, no matter where you are hiding, it will pick you and announce you to the world. I want to release that grace. Maybe not for everybody, but for someone here that is your season for God to announce that hear ye him anointing that will cause Yola, Adamawa, the Northeast, the North, Nigeria, Africa, and the globe to hear you. I decree and declare, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. You will marvel and wonder at how God will start raising men to announce you in the name of Jesus Christ. The final impartation I want to make. Please listen carefully. How many of you believe in the favor of God? There is a grace that is called favor. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. There is a grace that comes upon men. Psalms 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own strength. Neither did their sword save them. But thine arm, O God, thy right hand. It says because thou showest a favor towards them. The favor of God is powerful. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The people says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 of the same chapter says, and the king loved Esther more than all the virgins. She obtained favor in his sight and he made her to become queen in the stead of Vashti. I don't know what you have suffered as a result of the absence of favor, but I stretch my hands. This final impartation in the name of Jesus, May that grace for favor rest on you now. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. Before I speak over your territory finally, please everybody, no movement. Let's respect this call. Outside and inside, I want to make one last altar call. Before... I make a decree over the environment. Please hear me. There is no need to cajole you. The Lord Jesus, by everything I have said, has already convicted you. And you are saying, Apostle, I stand naked and unashamed, and I confess sincerely that I need Jesus. I have never consciously made this decision for Jesus. Or you are saying, Apostle, 
I may have made this decision, but my life has gone haywire. I need restoration. I don't need to flatter you. I'm going to count one to five. Whether you are outside or inside, the moment the front here is full, you will stand where you are. As I count one to five, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. You want to make it right with Jesus. I don't know where you are. Do not be ashamed. This is your night to make it right with Jesus. As we begin to clap for you, run to Jesus. One. Let's celebrate them, Yola. Two. Someone is running to Jesus. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come, come to Jesus. I need thee, oh. Please stand for space. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. Come to Jesus. We used to sing a song years ago. what this meeting is all about come you may cry but come come to Jesus young and old rich and poor male and female come to him a time must come when a region and a generation will pledge their allegiance without fear or favor to this Jesus Come. Now, listen to me. All of you in front, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. This is what this conference is about. If this is all that has happened in this conference, it still remains the greatest miracle. I salute every one of you in front for making the bold decision to leave your seats and to come to Jesus. I salute you. And for those of you who are making this decision online, from whatever nation of the world you are, co you are connecting from, thank you for making this decision. Now, just two instructions very quickly. I want to lead you in a very great prayer of salvation. And let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head. All of you who are in front, lift your right hand high above your head. Say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, this night... I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I declare that I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones. You have brought them by your spirit. They have declared your lordship. And I declare by the authority of your word that from tonight and in the name of Jesus Christ, 
we declare their sins forgiven. And in Jesus' name, we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight, like you have declared the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. You begin to walk in newness of life, forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, watch this. There are quite a number of them here. And I'm sure that a number of leaders have had to join the counselors. So all of you in front, this is what I want you to do. Please, in a very orderly way, so you do not injure yourselves, just turn to the back and you will see some counselors waving their hands. Counselors, please wave your hands. Let them see you. All of you, please follow these counselors and they will have a word with you very quickly. As we clap for them, please be on your way going. Your life is the best you can do for Jesus. Is this the best you can do for Jesus? Hallelujah. I have one more assignment and then I'm done. Let's be patient and allow them move. Now for those of you who are here, lift your hands. Let me speak over Adamawa and over Yola. In the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with his lordship and every man and woman of God here represented. We stand by the corporate anointing as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ over Yola and Adamawa. And we declare, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that every territorial spirit that has fought the gospel, fought the advancement of God's program, in the name of Jesus, let it be buried now. We declare a release over every church. A release over every Christian home. A release over every business. We pray for all who are in Yola and Adamawa. Both Christians and Muslims and everyone we declare. Because of this program, the city is blessed. Because of this program, the government is blessed. Because of this program, every home is blessed. Because of this program, the churches are blessed. Let every church in Yola and every church in Adamawa become a place of salvation, become a place of transformation, become a place of healing, a place of deliverance, and a place of fire. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that men and women of fire from Adamawa will rise to a global repute in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare the spirit of poverty that may have plagued families, plagued churches, plagued businesses, and even believers at large. We curse that spirit from this region. Let there be prosperity. Let there be favor. Let there be advancement. In the name of Jesus, shout a loud amen. Shout a louder amen. Finally, shout the loud most amen. Bishop, sir, thank you so much for this opportunity. Adam Awayola, thank you so much for this opportunity. I love you with all my heart. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.